message, how do we meditate to stop anxiety? So what was I talking about Eastern versus Western meditation? So if you look into uh, a lot of the religions you might, or ways of thinking people like to say over here, uh, Buddhism for example, Buddhism actually believes in God. Buddhism is based on a belief in God. I have friends who are monks, uh, done some research in my church. If you look at the first, uh, you can say Dalai Lama or follow a Buddha who to, was to write down anything about Buddhism, Ashoka, 300 years after Buddha, was, but because in those times people didn't write things down, it's just on stones and things like that, he clearly showed that belief in God was necessarily part of it, and even monks nowadays say that, right? So the problem, the watered down version of meditation is this need to somehow exclude God from your meditation, and that really ruins the whole process, because if you want to deal with anxiety, let me try to get to the point really quickly, anxiety is hyper self-consciousness. We're worried about yourself, about all sorts of incredibly tight. I don't want to play it down, but nowadays I keep hearing this person looked at me this way. I'm really, I can't handle it. And these are common problems. Yeah. Um, and the opposite, and one thing I want to quickly mention is the what I talk about is based on science and psychology. So, what is known as the opposite of anxiety is a state of flow and that can actually be measured in your brain it's a kind of activity in your prefrontal cortex is the most modern or most human part of us it's what differentiates us from other animals right because we really plan and think and when we get that quiet and quiet and down that's called flow and that's a sense of oneness oneness with creation and you get that, in short, to give dust a chance to talk, you get that when you forget yourself, not just plainly forget yourself, but in short, when you are one with creation. So what you do to do that is you simply reflect on God, which is actually all the different religions believe in that. Um, I could like to talk a bit more about that at some point, like we shouldn't restrict ourselves to a certain pose and things like that. And, but I think I'll give just a chance to interject and say what you think and we can keep the conversation going. And anybody else who wants to jump in, please, please do. Please jump in, because it'll be welcome, as you well know. So first thing I want to say, medic meditation is a brilliant thing that all the religions have given our society and culture. And I fundamentally believe that meditation is what is not only something we should be practicing and engaging with, but it should also be classed as a human right. It should be, you should be allowed by law time to reflect and meditate. To meditate in which way, any way you choose though. And this meditation should help you find calmness and help you reflect onto yourself or onto your God, but it definitely should transpire not necessarily just in a, a religious venue, but ex external of that religious venue, but should be an absolute law that we are not, instead of just working all the time, instead of being in this capitalist society, where, by the way, in a capitalist society, the only way you're really allowed to meditate in a capitalist society is through drugs and alcohol. That is the only way, horrifically, in a capitalist society, that's the, the uh, or TV. See, these are the things that we're fed in capitalism as a way of meditation. And of course, that is the, the antithesis of meditation, an antithesis of being able to discover yourself or your religion or whatever you're meditating upon. So this capitalism does restrict us because if you're working all the time, then you can't meditate or even more importantly, engage with your family community, etc. And these other. So you, when you say meditate in a capitalist society, meditate, what does that mean to you? Like to contemplate, and the only thing you're allowed to contemplate is what? TV. TV. You're not allowed to contemplate. So you're, you're alcohol. Have to be a consumer all the time. You so have you to be a consumer all the time in right. capitalism. Sure. This is one of the reasons why I profoundly think we need to remove capitalism and replace it with something that gives human rights and 
human I would ability. say, you, you know me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not against capitalism, but capitalism by itself, without morality, is deadly. But capitalism has its function of uh, setting prices, because either we set prices through capitalism, or we get or give all the power to a government that maybe is a bit distracted. Can I, can I just, yeah, I can yeah, do a point, point yeah. so I'm going to move That's on. a really good point. Right. So the, issue, the issue is that you're, what you're doing already within this discussion yeah. is, quite rightly, identifying areas from capitalism to whatever. Sure. But I think there's a mixed bag here. So it depends um, if you think all the meditation you're talking about is wrong within the capital sphere. So if you're talking about things like going to a football match, where people get away from their normal lives, they go and they, they, they let all their uh, they start having unbridled joy with each other, people basically hugging people they've never met before in their lives because a ball hits a bang of a piece of netting, right? which they identify together. And you get that moment of kinship with complete and absolute strangers. It could be looked as a two-way thing. In one way, you can say, oh, it's bad, it's capitalism, whatever. In other way, you can say that's actually quite a euphoric moment and gives that person a feeling of wellness. It gives, um, it gives a feeling of wellness for a while, the fact that that's happened. Okay, so people will get... Um, meditation could be music, which could be capitalist driven. There could be certain uh, bands, like tonight there's bands on here, for example, there's Rolling Stones, I think, tonight here. Which are anti capitalists. Yeah, fine, right. okay, well, that's another. Yeah. yeah, but what I'm trying to say is but they've, they've, they've done quite well out of the capitalist system. So the issue is, you might say it's a bad thing, but people are coming in their droves tonight to meditate in the temple of the Rolling Stones, yeah? Sure. yeah. So is it doing good or bad? Most people come out quite happy and say it was a great experience, it made them feel good. They sang the songs they know, that they unify with these people. With, sure. And that is a form of meditation created by the evil capitalism so sort of you're talking about. Is you're saying so that I don't think you can yeah. label everything in the capitalism bad. There may be right. bad in it, but I think you need to be more balanced with this. Sure. Okay. You, you want to say? Something? I think it's very important to, to pick out the hypocrisy in that state. You need to come a bit closer. Uh, and what is the hypocrisy? It's because if you don't have football, used to be as sport. He's right about football, by the way. That football was privatised. Now, tickets are so high that the only way you can indulge in that That's meditation... the bad side of it, I get that. The it's bad side. Getting, some people yeah. are getting a good side of that. A bad side you ignored. And the people I, think, are, I just said there was a bad side. And the, uh, a bad side, which means that only a few people get rich from uh, your meditation. Where it used to be football, the tickets were cheap, and then you could rightly go to your football match as a supporter, and instead of uh, your football uh, club buying players for £20 billion, pounds. what they do, they're encouraged to support their local community and the football uh, in that local so I community. So I could go tomorrow and buy the Led Zeppelin 4 album, the and, the and have a nice meditation with that. So if you basically but I pay the capitalist system, because those men um, got a benefit from the capitalist system. No, that's a surprise. Uh, but there's one, one more point. Yeah. Uh, Basically, the point is, if you don't have money and you're not entitled to meditation, well, and that is clearly never used to be the case, and clearly has now become the case. And that includes, if you don't have the money, you can't know entitled to health or education. I mean, this expands out to everything, not just medication. Sure, okay, so this is a really interesting point. I, I want to start by saying I'm not against capitalism like I started off, and, but there was an interesting point saying, let's start with your point, right? So football, interesting idea of meditation, and I do agree that to some extent what we want to do, the point of this is how do you get away from anxiety, and one, what you need to do to do that is get away from being at the center of your world all the time. You want to get to a level of oneness. Something and else. you get to a, what, a, some degree of oneness through this, what I would call tribalism, where you become at one with your community, but kind of, the bad thing about it is you're kind of against another community, but also when your team loses, all that meditation yeah. goes so down the, the toilet. That's the risk of it, that's what I'm trying to say. Right. Uh, that, that's the risk of it. Okay, sure. that, that's the balance. So I'm sure. saying I don't, just saying so I don't I get it. So I think what your point was is yeah. like, there's don't hate on capitalism. There's good and bad. There's, a, there's alternative... Some of the capitalism has made some come out very euphoric. Yeah. I've met people who have been really low, low ebbs of their lives, yeah. who have come out of a football stadium, you think this is mad, yeah. their team has won the FA Cup, they're joyous for two yeah. days. Do you know what I'd say it's done them some good for a couple okay, of days? Okay, sure. That's yeah. to do with capitalism. 
But that's a form of... Of course it is, because they have to pay the capitalist system. Let me... Let me, just, let, me, let, let me get on to, uh, but I really like Dust's point of view as well, which is you shouldn't have to pay to meditate. So what I'm talking about is something that's free, but something that transcends for a longer period of time is way more meaningful as well. Uh, and it's more tied in with psychology. So a lot of people won't know that part of mental health, good mental health, is to be within nature. And I describe God and nature as being one thing. And these, that's the essential parts of meditation from Eastern meditation. There was always, it was never just block, stop your mind from working, which is, this is kind of an unhealthy idea, right? It's, uh, but that's an attempt to find some sort of oneness or stop chasing, uh, you know, materialism. And so there's kind of a little bit of value in that. But a more practical way than trying to stop your brain from working or just stop thinking of a thing, which is just impractical, is actually concentrate on nature, on God. And what that does, that naturally gives you in a, the opposite of anxiety, which is a state of flow. And that actually is known by a psychologist to give you a sense of peace because you're forget yourself and you're one with nature. Can I throw in a yes. Go for it. Yeah. Right. I get that because yeah. I'm in I'm in Hyde Park, okay? Yeah. I'm standing here in this mad place speaker's corner. Yeah. Within five minutes I could be sitting by a tree in the middle of nowhere with no one anywhere near me and I could sure. be sitting on my own with my own thoughts and I could have a nice relaxing afternoon, agree? Uh, possibly. I don't know about no right. thoughts. The, but the but bit anyway, for me yeah. and I'm gonna ask you that, and that's yeah. where it came from. Love, is yeah. for me I don't I don't believe I need the plus God. Yeah. I can understand about the meditation of going away for free and not paying a capitalist system to go and sit by a tree over there for two hours and come back to speaker's corner all impressed and think, oh, that was lovely. I just sat there and thought and my thoughts. No one was around me for 10 minutes or for two hours or whatever. However, do I need the plus God? And the plus God brings another factor to me, which maybe I've got too much time to discuss now. Because the plus God, I think, has also that oxymoron issue of too good and bad within it. So... It's the plus God I'd like to, to get more from you. Where do, where do you see the plus God coming into my personal meditation? My own meditation? Right, okay. So, uh, God is just part of nature. There doesn't have to be an evil God or something that a lot of people believe He's in. He's represented, isn't he, in various yeah. ways? Yeah. So, it's a way of contemplating or absorbing yourself into, uh, you know, like... Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I see what you mean. Why do we get the happy? I'm not attacking people about yeah, God. Yeah. What I'm saying is, for me, for example, who does not great believe in God, yeah. doesn't mean that. So some people will go to that meditation place over at Hyde Park Tree, the famous tree, and will have the plus God. Yeah. But I might say I didn't actually need the plus God, but I still had a very nice meditative experience. Sure. So I mean, the problem with not believing God and it has necessarily led to more depression is because of this idea of nihilism. When you believe in nihilism, which is the idea that nothing means everything and it's all random, that necessarily destroys any idea of hope because hope is thinking there's a pattern that leads to a better future. And if everything is random, it makes things uncertain. And also another problem with not believing in God is the lack of meaning, which also comes from everything is random and meaningless. And meaning, uh, and this is part of what I do here, is I talk about what, is the, what the, the, are the ABCs of psychology that have been known for 50, 70 years now, but the public don't know. And the, what is known by uh, uh, Frederick, uh, no, sorry, what's his name? Franco, Franco anyway, well, he, he wrote Man's Search for Meaning, right? Yeah, Franco. Yeah, uh, and he said basically you have to have meaning to be happy without that. And we can kind of think about that. Like if my life is pointless or if your job is pointless, it's going to be a miserable existence. And with that, Without God, it's very difficult to create God meaning. Is an absolute requirement of someone for meditation? Or is it just suitable people who are people of religion or faith? Because, yeah. and I'll give you my reason why, yeah. 
God comes with, a, for me, a good and a bad. And one of the issues I find with God, the belief of religion, is the issue of OCD. It brings in an obsessive compulsive disorders that people have to live, pray the five times a day, do these things with their head going, if I don't do it, so it, so it actually acts against the meditative issue, the, med the meditation issue, because meditation is going to bring you that, that inner peace, that complete peace. So on some occasions, God can be actually driving up the OCD within you because you have to adhere to that belief within that God's rules and whatever. Sure. That's the danger I find in, in, in always a plus I really like the fact that you brought up the five days. I'm going to get you Because OCD is within this. There is an OCD. So I really like the thing that you brought about brought up about the five daily prayers, right? Yeah. So there's a, I was interviewing a convert to Islam and he was thinking about these five daily prayers. It yeah. seems to be like a lot of work. But then he it's thought, he works in a stock exchange and he said, he thought to himself, wouldn't it be lovely if my boss said, guys, just put your pens down, stop work right now, mandatory, you've got to chill out. And that's what the five daily prayers are, mandatory. And it's not just about Islam. I was talking to my Jewish neighbor the other day, yesterday actually, and he was saying like, he's working from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night. He's a chef at Wimbledon Tennis. And they asked him, do you want to do Saturday? And he said, you know what? No. And he could easily say no. He didn't have to think about it because he said, this is my religion. He was it's a Sabbath. Bit where he could have a break. It's yeah, it was a, it's a Sabbath. I get that. I'm not disagreeing And that's that. the great thing about this sort of mandatory thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's a yeah. good excuse to step out of this yeah. treasure. So just, just summarising from my point of yeah. view, because I, I then you can get something out of me being with this, um, is a very interesting discussion yeah. because I understand where you're coming from. I actually do understand exactly yeah. what you're trying to say. And my, my only summary of this from my point of view is that I get it, but I, I think I would have a problem with just Perhaps God all the time for the reasons I gave. I think it comes with with issues. I think to do with this OCD from my point of, from my point of view. Okay? You might say yes, that five prayers that gives him the break. Yeah. And I know because I have a, I come from Jewish extraction. I come from a Jewish family. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And years ago when I grew up, it was like almost an offence to go to a football match on Saturday afternoon yeah. because that was supposed to be the day of rest. But was it an enforced rest on me? And and or was it? I mean, some people would have got that within my family would have got a benefit from that because it gave them a reason not to work on that day. I get that, but I would just say on this that I would accept that for. The meditation to include plus God, I think it is in the equation. I just feel that um, it shouldn't always be a total requirement for everybody because people's belief systems are different and their ways of meditation are different. And I just have that slight caveat that the Saturday that has to be the day of rest, which could be good, which I get, can also come sometimes with an OCD in it. But if they're breaking those Sabbath laws, they're almost hyping over it. I've seen people who are literally hyping because they realise they're breaking those laws. Sure. So it acts against what the meditation is about. I get what you're saying. Okay. I, I just want to give dust a chance. Just stick around for one minute right. and then Does I'm going to... Yeah, yeah I, agree. I totally get what you're saying. First, I'd say what a great example of a speaker here at the Article himself not with just abuse or uh, accusations, but actually genuinely engaging with the people in front of you. I hope we can all learn from this gentleman. So now I want to pick him apart. That's fine. Firstly, he made the statement that it's free to go and sit in the park and meditate. That is not true whatsoever. Unfortunately, this park it costs money to make the park, it costs money to police the park, maintain the park, and not only that, it costs money and thought and politics to maintain the environment around the park so that we can all feel like we can engage in said environment. So it's not free, it does cost, but we don't pay money. Again, it's a cashless transaction in a cashless society that I would envision in the world. And a great example of it is that. So uh, I just like, my, the point of view I'm gonna come from is how a government would allow meditation to happen. I've already given an example. A government would create free area, which is paid for by taxes, that we can all come to if we wish to meditate in that form and function. If we have other forms of function, but what a government must never do, must never do, is tell you how to meditate. That's what a government must never do. But it must give you the environment and time to meditate. So that means going up against catalysts 
we want you to work 24 7 and saying our population deserve and have the human right in fact to meditate whether it be football whether it be in the park in a mosque or uh, synagogue or church or what a socialist or whatever you are and, and this meditation is going to should be and would be a beautiful way that's how government would function government a dictatorship would tell you how to meditate a dictatorship would tell you which religion to meditate in that's a dictatorship and um, my last point on uh, nihilism is that um, I, if the meditation isn't working for you and it isn't making you reflect about yourself and other people's gods and religions and it, you're not coming away with more enlightenment in the positive rather than just hoping for the negative then that's where I would say meditation has failed. Can I, Med yeah, sorry, don't, I mean I want to quickly respond to some really... Your, no, sorry, I want to come, can I just come back to just for a second? I'll give you... What like is a, in my head? Okay, go on. Yeah. I mean, I'll listen yeah, yeah. to you right. Thank you for agreeing with everything I just said before. Because your, 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 what you, your statement you just stated is the fact that yes, the capitalist system created this part. No, the government. It's a plus point though, because that's plus point bit of the government. Well, call it government then. Let's, let's go with your yeah, one. Let's call it government, so, which is exactly so what it is. Hang on, the government created the part. For me now to go and sit by the tree and have a meditation, so that's a good aspect out of something that the government has done. So you could argue, yes, I get it, that it needed a capitalist system, it needed a government system, but it still provided me that open space. So that's my point. My point is there's good and bad in this, and that's the good bit of it. What a capitalist would do was charge you to come in. But I want to make you're it... That's not a meditation, though. That's what I did. Yeah. So, so I, had to, I had to come back to you So, I, I, you know what? When you were saying, like, do you have to believe in God? And that just reminded me, my purpose wasn't to force people to believe in God to meditate. But I was going to say, if you really want to get the value out of meditation, focus on nature. Yeah. Contemplate. And the, the value of the breathing technique, which you might have used, like, just focus on your breathing... What that does, it focuses you on your inner universe, which is also part of nature. Yeah? So if you can focus on those things, you don't have to make an effort not to think, which is a really crazy idea. Like, for example, if I said, uh, don't, right now, don't think about cats, you're going to start to think about cats, yes. right? So what you do is you don't tell people not to think about something. Psychology. Yeah, it's the, it's the wrong approach. What you do is you get them into a flow state, which I want to get back to this. According to psychologists, flow state is the opposite of anxiety. How do you get to a flow state? You really focus on something that is really meaningful in your life. And nature, I want to talk about nature, is known by psychologists as to be good for your mental health. So focus on nature, in your inner nature, if you start breathing slowly and just contemplate on your heart beating and being grateful for that, that really would help with that anxiety. Well, that's it. I accept yes. that. Point. Yes, I do. I think we're because agreeing. I, Hannah, I we agree with that one caveat, yeah. which I will put in, is that the aspect of God for me has, yeah. has, has a dual. Some good it's done people, but yeah. it's also the act it brings anxiety yeah. itself. But That's I just want to find it while you're here. Yeah. Um, basically, what you're saying is because you, a lot of people have had a bad experience of God. Yeah, right? I have. Right? Um, and maybe that's why you want to throw in this caveat or whatever. Yeah, everyone, everyone does this to me as right. speakers. It says, oh, a lot of religious people, oh, I'm had just a bad saying, experience. But why? I genuinely haven't. Okay, that's it's great. It's just as I've, I've traveled the world, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to bore you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've traveled the world, I've been dust early before. I've traveled the world a lot. I'm very lucky, I'm a real travel person. Yeah. I've traveled to all different religious centers of the world, whatever. Yeah. And I'm just not convinced that the, the actual supreme being is there. Sure. I believe in nature, I can see nature and yeah. all sort of things. So don't get me wrong, yeah. but no, I will clarify, I'll, 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 I'll hang my, I've not had a bad experience That's good, that's religion. great, I'm great. That's but not I'm a problem. Just thinking I come from a fairly secular family, but I was brought, sure. I, can, I can read Hebrew, yeah. I was brought up a Jewish family, but I wasn't um, like pushed like this. It was like, um, it was just part of my life and it was okay, and I, I've got no bad experiences saying that I had a Jewish upbringing. Sure, you get me? The, the reason there I said that... There are people that have, I can yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not, not with me. And no, I, I, that's that's not the reason why I don't... 
Fair enough, fair enough. People do say this to me, but I'm yeah. qualified. So, just to so kind of try to summarise, to move on to your second yeah. question, which was great your, in, uh, you know, in your involvement, and really helped me explain things better. People should know that psychologists, including atheist psychologists, say religion is good for you for so many of these reasons, because it gives meaning, direction, hope that there's something that's taking care of you and all these things. So God is not a bad idea, but it can be misused by, I would describe, politicians, who and use it can it. be a source of anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that. I'm going to thank leave you now. You very enjoy much. It. Yeah, you've got more than 10 minutes. All right. Again, yeah. we'd like to thank you for how a proper speaker... What's your name, by the way? Would you mind it would be like an F a featuring whatever your name What's your name? Ian. Yeah. Ian. Yeah. Everyone knows you. Yeah, so I'm here in space for this point. I mean, I've known Gus for a very long time. So. Great. No, I actually enjoyed that discussion. It was good discussion. Thank you. It was really interesting. And that is a great example of someone presenting and articulating in a wholesome, engaged way. We all can learn when we come here, wherever you are. Feel free to stick around here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm you don't like yeah, this I'll conversation. I'll be in role for those who come back. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank all right. You. Enjoyed it. Okay. So, the next one, 